Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Oh, Nikki, we're starting a new series. Yes. Very exciting. It's a job series. We're talking about work. Jobs. But in a little jobs. bit of a different spin, because I had you, this uh, idea. The, yeah. You had an idea. You had a brainstorm. We're going to talk about uh, all of that and and how this came to you while you were doing your civic duty, That's right. which I have to say, mad props Thank you. for doing your civic duty. Uh, and so we're going to talk about jobs. We're going to talk about the work we do of our lives and uh, how we relate our lives to our work and our identities to our work as well. So before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. Get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list and we will send you an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest at Take Control ADHD. But to really connect with us, head over to the Discord community. Super, super easy to jump into the public Discord chat channel. TakeControlADHD.com slash Discord. You'll just be whisked over to the uh, invitation page for the public channel. If you have a Discord account, you can log in with that and get into our server. If you don't, it'll click you through setting up a new account uh, on Discord. It's pretty easy, like any other social media platform. And then you will get into our server. If you want to see where all the secrets uh, lie, then you have to become a patron. Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast for a few bucks a month. You're supporting the show. You're helping support the entire ADHD community and all the things that we do to uh, on the back end to keep these things humming along. You also get access to a bunch of new Patreon channels and so that or, or Discord channels. That's really the important thing. If you are in Discord and you know you are a patron, but you only see the public channel, then you're you're your platforms are not connected. You have to enter your Discord ID into your Patreon account and then everything magically unlocks and you will pull back the green curtain, velvet curtain, and see the Wizard of Oz. Is that how that works? I don't know how things work. (laughs) So make sure you do that. Know that you're supporting the show. You're supporting uh, everything that we do to keep things moving along and you get early access to the podcast and lots of bonus stuff and uh, we, we we just appreciate everything you do to become a supporter. Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. We have a couple of immediate hot announcements. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is the book club. Uh, Enrollment is open for the next term for the ADHD book club. As a group, we will be diving into one of my favorite books by one of my favorite authors, Focus Forward, Navigating the Storms of Adult ADHD. And this is written by our good friend who's been on the show now, what, eight times, I think? Eight times. Eight times. James, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer, James Ochoa. Uh, so whether you've read this book or you've never read this book, uh, I would love to have you join us and consider signing up for this book club because James has generously offered his time to drop in a couple of times to share his firsthand insights through the eight weeks uh, that we'll be covering the book. And you can sign up at takecontroladhd.com slash book club. So don't wait because the deadline to sign up is Wednesday, May 31st. And uh, we will start with our first session shortly after that in June. That's one thing that's going on. That's just the one thing, but oh no, Uh, there's more. Pete, did you know that the decluttering challenge is happening in June, not July? No, I didn't know you that. Didn't That's know an that. embarrassing back channel joke because <laughs> we've had some we've had some some organizational issues on the back end. But I do know now, yes. absolute with absolute clarity that the 2023 declutter challenge is coming in the month of June. June. That is when the decluttering shall commence. Yes. Everything prior to June is the preparation for the declutter challenge. Yes. And enrollment. So what is the declutter challenge? Oh, I'm so excited about this. So we did something very similar in January of 2022. We're doing it again in Jan- or June. June <laughs> of 2023. <laughs> uh, so this is what's happening. In January 2022, this is embarrassing, uh, I worked on my garage. I did a good job. People that were part of that challenge, they physically watched me working in my garage. Right. I need to tackle my garage again. (laughs) (laughs) And a lot more. So I'm hoping... 
please don't make me do this by myself. <laughs> this is what I'm asking. Uh, so I want you to join me in decluttering uh, in the month of June. I'm going to keep saying that just to like poke the bear a little bit over there. Oh, <laughs> uh, but what's going to happen is we are going to do a challenge the same challenge that we did in January. So on June 1st, we're going to find one item to get rid of. And then on the second, we need to remove two items. So by the time we get to June 30th, you will need to find 30 things to get out of your house. So if you complete the whole challenge, you will have removed a total of 465 pieces of clutter. I'm going to beat that. I know I'm going to beat that. Yeah. Right. Uh, during the challenge, we'll be kicking off uh, with a webinar where I'm going to share some organizing and decluttering tips and help you set some goals for the month. So that's going to happen on June 1st. And then Saturday, I'm going to be hosting a four hour body double session to work on the challenge. Uh, at the end, we will have a final uh, webinar where we are going to celebrate all of the wonderful things that we've done. And I'm also going to talk about how to maintain those spaces so that I don't have to keep doing the garage over and over and over again. And maybe the next time that we do the challenge, I'll find something else. Uh, so to sign up... Because <laughs> at this rate, people pretty much think you only have one room in your house I, and it's a garage. But is it? Like, I? I it looks like... <laughs> it doesn't look like a garage. Uh, okay. So... Head over to takecontroladhd.com slash declutter to sign up. And uh, I would love to have you join me. There you go. Outstanding. I can't wait. And you're not going to do any attic work this time, right? Not this time. This time I am really doing the garage. Because I've got to tell you, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show, uh, but my attic, I did part of the attic in January of 2022 as well. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. actually really did make a difference because this Christmas uh, was a lot easier to get the stuff out and put the, to, to put the decorations back in. So there was actually a lot of progress in the attic that I felt really good about. And I didn't fall through the ceiling. So I was going to say we're so good. significantly reinforced floors of the attic, yeah. which is outstanding. Yeah, we're yeah. good. So proud of you. Thank you. You've made, you've made it. <laughs> made a lot of headway. Let's talk about jobs. What do you do, Pete, right? This, I can't. Who, I, so we'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay. We, this started because you went to jury duty. Uh, went to jury duty. I'm in line and I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing the right thing. I'm doing, doing the right absolutely thing. absolutely the right thing. Uh, but I'm bored and I'm cranky because it was raining and I had to park uh, a couple blocks away and I didn't have an umbrella. So I got there and I was wet and then I didn't know where to go and traffic and like, it was just ugh, yucky. So mm -hmm. I'm standing in line and I'm looking at the law library, which is next to me. And there's a person there, a librarian. I'm wondering if she likes her job. And then I see these people who are walking in the hallway and they obviously work in the building somewhere because they had like their little lunches, you know, and they were going to work. And I'm thinking, I wonder if they like their job. I wonder what they do. I wonder who they mm -hmm. are. <laughs> and my mind mm -hmm. just starts going. And I'm thinking, I'm really interested in knowing what our community does. What, what do they do for a living? Do they like what mm -hmm. they do? You know, do they not like what they do? If they didn't like what they do, the, what what they're doing, did they leave? And then all of these questions came. So I got out my phone and I went into notes and I started writing all of these questions. And I thought this would be a great series. So it's not so much about interviewing and like how to do your work or workflow. Like I'm really interested in just knowing how people choose what they're going to do mm -hmm. and get, and get feedback, you know, from our audience. Like let, let us know if you left a job and why you left it and where you went, what you learned, all of those things. So that's what we're going to do. Well, and I, I, the reason this appeals to me is that it's it's because it's less about the practicality of, you know, preparing a resume and finding a job. But it's about how 
the work that you do defines your identity mm -hmm. in, in some Well, especially part. in and this show, right? Like this especially specific in this show, show, for sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, and, it, you know, I was just listening to one of our favorite people on one of our favorite podcasts, Rob Lowe, being interviewed on Smartless. Uh, which is oh, I bet I, that's it, a good one. Not this week or the week before, like it's it's pretty current. And um, he was talking about the transition that he made from working in like it, they classified him as being a a character actor in a leading man's body, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's so handsome mm -hmm. and has always been cast as the handsome guy, but he really is capable of a lot of other stuff. And at one point, he decided I want to do comedy and just like, that's what I want to do. But nobody was interested until, you know, a, a, a few key roles. And then he ended up in the 90s doing all Austin Powers and and uh, Tommy Boy and, and those kinds of movies. And so talking about how I, I think that that made it really sort of present to me, this idea of being recast in a field that is so dependent on identity and pre-existing identity, right? You you only get your first shot at making an impression once. So how do you do that in other fields? And, and so I've been thinking a lot about that. And and so we've been talking about getting and losing jobs and trying to find new jobs and and, you know, wondering constantly, am I in the right job for me? Am I am I satisfying who I am? And right now we're in a a, a, a job market that is rife with creative destruction, right? This idea that your job is going to be replaced by automation again, AI, like massive layoffs and projected layoffs and massive destruction of of levels of the economy because of the way, uh, you know, the way the uh, work is done. And so how do you let the work that you do define who you are? And I think that's a that's a really anxious question. Oh, for sure. It's certainly for me. Well, and especially if you don't know how to describe it, it doesn't have like a title or maybe you don't work and you do other things. Like what, mm -hmm. what does that, how do you explain that without having that yeah. anxiety and without right. going into detail that maybe that person doesn't understand or know or care about like what is that elevator speech, I guess, right? Is that we talked about that before, like what, what is mm -hmm. the speech, the elevator speech of telling somebody what you're looking for or who you are. So it's, right. yeah, it's definitely uh, different. So you're at an event. There are people around you that you don't know, Pete. You're mm -hmm. introduced to someone mm -hmm. new. Once you begin talking nine times out of 10, the first question you're asked is, what do you, what do, you do? do? Yeah. Pete, I'm I really it. curious about how you answer this question because I don't really know how to explain what you do. Well, you know, it's gotten easier over the, but certainly since the pandemic, it's gotten easier. Um, but I, I have in my note, what do you, what do you, how do you answer if you have a job that to many people sounds like a joke, right? right. Because my answer, my one word answer is I'm a podcaster, mm. right? Like I make my living making podcasts mm -hmm. in some fashion or another. And as a result of that, I do a lot of other work, right? I do graphic design and copywriting and all kinds of, of technical stuff and sound engineering and mixing and mastering and recording and all of that, which could in themselves be careers. Mm -hmm. But it's all packaged up for me as a podcaster. I run a podcasting network, right? And, and, for a lot of people, that sounds so far afield from what a job should be that it just sounds like I'm making a joke. Right. It sounds like a joke. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. It's fine. And I've I, I have internalized it to the point where it's not a joke. And I can I can then go and explain it. And especially when I say, you know, we make like 30 shows like it's not a it's not a triviality that is my job. But uh, and, and so on my taxes, it's a marketing agency. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> but, yeah. Right. But but really, my identity is tied up in, in this new thing that's still pretty new, even though I've been doing it for almost 20 years mm -hmm. called podcasting. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. What do you do? Well, I. I do. So this is what I do is I work with people who have ADHD and I work with adults and college students. So you don't say you're an ADHD coach. Mm -mm. No, not? not anymore. I don't know if I ever even really did. I think because like with podcasting, people don't really understand what coach means. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's easier just to let people know that this is this is who I work with. And then if they have more questions, I can 
kind of expand on that. Uh, most, it, it's interesting because I just went to the eye doctor and um, she asked me what I did. I mean, this happens all the time. What do you do? Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I said. She assumed that I was like some kind of therapist uh, because she started talking about HIPAA and she's like, well, you know okay. about HIPAA. And, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't care for HIPAA. Co- co- confidentiality. <laughs> I get that. Um, yeah. So, but I didn't correct her. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not going to sit there and tell her the difference between a coach and a therapist. Um, but yeah, that's how I came to it. I don't talk about, you know, I don't really talk about the podcast unless it comes up in conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my canned answer. Because people just don't really get it. Like, if you say ADHD coach, like, what? What yeah. do you do? Yeah. 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 That's the hardest thing. And I think it's only gotten more challenging to uh, address that question, especially if you've bounced around a lot right. or, you know, if you're if you're not sure kind of how like you don't have a job where it's easy in one word to say something that everybody's going to understand. Right. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a pharmacist. I'm an accountant. I'm a journalist. I'm an accountant. And yet I have run into more and more people who have who have those kinds of jobs and are realizing that due to many different factors, many of them complex, are able to build careers doing something that they really want to do, not something that they feel like they should do. Mm-hmm. Right. I look at at uh, uh, David Sparks and Glenn Fleischman. These are all guys who used to be attorneys and they've turned into making media careers for smaller audiences that actually where they can actually teach about something that these guys love. And as it happens, they're nerds about typography and Mac stuff. And and they have made they, they've they made themselves publishers to niche audiences and realized, oh, my God, it takes fewer and fewer people to create a career than I ever imagined I could possibly do as a kid when I was told I should go get a stable job. And, you know, sure, you can do something in in this field if that's really, you know, as a hobby, but you should have a stable job that allows you to to, you know, have something that, you know, have uh, something you can count on. Right. You know, to, as listening to you, you've made a really good point that I didn't even connect. And that's sort of the differences between generations, right? Like where mm-hmm. we are today compared to what, well, we're, when you and I were in high school or when our parents were uh, just starting out in their jobs, because it was more of a, I'm an accountant, I am a doctor, I am a receptionist, I, uh, <laughs> I'm the lunch lady, like, I mean, whatever it might be, there's this like short, quick title of who I am. And now it's so different because I don't even think you could have told me when I graduated from college that I would be doing the business that I'm doing right now. I wouldn't even think it was possible. I didn't, cell phones weren't even a thing then, Uh, you know? So it is an interesting thought to think about how different things are now, yet we still expect to be able to give somebody a short answer that mm-hmm. that summarizes it. And it's interesting because this conversation came up in one of the coaching with Nikki's that we do monthly if you're a Patreon member. Got to mm-hmm. use that plug. plug. Uh, but it, it came up with uh, how do you deal with this when maybe, you know, you have some shame or distress around uh and I think this goes back to what you were saying. What if I've had multiple jobs and I'm not like in an, you know, a career or what if I don't work, but I volunteer and I volunteer at several different places? Like, how does this, how does this come mm-hmm. across? Um, right. Yeah. Right. And, and how do you, like, you know, I, I never say, I never tell people in my, you know, my sphere about my educational background. Because no, I don't uh, it just it it doesn't really come up. But at some point you made a choice to to go into HR after college. Right. Or wasn't your degree in like merchandising or something? Yeah, I was in merchandising management. So I started retail management right out of college, which is, rele- you know, it, it's relevant to that degree. Um, mm-hmm. And then I went into HR. Who? Where did that influence come? Like, wh- what was it that made you go into HR? Well, because I'm a nosy person. Well, that's a weird way to segue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can tell you. I mean, one of the reasons why I loved being in HR is because I want to know what every I want to know what's going on with everyone. 
And That's so funny. Um, so it was always really interesting to me to HR is a very different kind of job, right? Because mm-hmm. you're you're in the middle. You're working for the employee, but you're also working for the employer and you have to be neutral. But -hmm. you have to know everything that's going on with the employee and you have to know everything that's going on with the employer. And And ultimately, it's the employer that pays your check. At the end of the day, it's the employer that pays the check. But at the same time, you're the advocate of, you know, if an employee is being harassed or having a hard time, like you want to make sure that they're being treated fairly and that you do the proper Mm -hmm. channels of investigating, all that stuff, right? And there's more to HR than just that. But um, I just always was interested in what people do. Maybe that's why, okay, so now I'm connecting the dots. That's probably why I was standing in line at jury duty wondering if these people like their jobs. Yeah, yeah. It's just natural curiosity I have. Yeah probably why you're a coach, right? Because Absolutely. you're able to poke around corners, right? Right, right. And, and develop a relationship on a level of intimacy with somebody that is um, that is deeper than you normally, you know, would. Absolutely. Absolutely. I uh, so I my undergrad, I started thinking I was going to be a psychologist and I did a couple of years there. And then I went into journalism, transferred schools because dad was in journalism. First job was at a TV station, thought I'm going to go into television, Uh, worked in television for a little while. It was uh, not for me after I graduated. Mm. um, And uh, that was miserable. Lived in Korea, got into marketing because somebody literally off the street said, hey, you should, I need you to help translate a meeting. And that's, that was a person from Hyundai and ended up uh, in the marketing department in Tegu, South Korea. And uh, while I was teaching over there and then came back and was in marketing and PR, but I got my graduate degree, my master's degree in organizational design. Like I have a master's degree that is an HR degree, right? Right. (laughs) Right. Right. I spent years studying how organizations work right. and how they how they function as complex organisms made up of more complex organisms. I'm fascinated by that stuff. I think I can make the case that I use the collection of skills that I got on all of those early careers today in my podcasting degree. But it's a very windy path mm-hmm. if you were to chart the, uh, a path from, you know, graduation day, high school to today. Right, right. Um, it, it's all a collection of skills. And I think that's why I want to get to this series, like uh, th- that that the idea that we are a collection, we're a giant basket that is a collection of skills that makes up a career, makes stuff hard to describe and make it, it, it you know, easily to people. And that's OK. Right. That's the part that we've got to get to, that it doesn't have to be filled describing who you are as a function of what you do or conversely, describing what you do as a function of who you are doesn't have to be filled with confusion, humor, shame, any of those things. It just is. Right. It just is. Right. Right. Oh, I agree. I. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, we made a joke about it because I, I have in my head, I've, I've for a long time had this this idea of doing a um, doing a podcast called Headstone and don't take it, everybody. It's mine. I want it. And it's all about humans and the legacy that we leave behind. And the joke is like on the headstone is, you know, here lies Pete. He wishes he'd done more accounting. Right. Like that that stuff cracks me up because right. nobody has ever said that. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Said that. Uh, I they, need more numbers they, they, in my life. <laughs> right. Right. I yeah. wish I just wish I had done more rental car agency management, right? Right. Like nobody says that. Uh, And so how do we communicate who we are without associating it with a job? How do we break out of that particular box? Because we are so much more complex than the stuff we do nine to five. So true. And yet we're still going to get answer or we're still going to get asked that question when we go to the eye doctor or yeah. wherever. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, this is kind of off topic a little bit. Well, it's not it's on topic, but going a different way. I've been talking to my daughter a lot about colleges and like where she might want to go and study. 
And I can see mm-hmm. the stress and anxiety that's that's coming up because she feels like she has to make a, this decision and she has to like decide now what she wants to do. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't have to decide now. You're 17. Like you have a long yeah. way to go. Like you're going to be working yeah. a lot. Like you don't have to decide. So there's also that. You might not decide until you're 20 and then decide again when you're 30. <laughs> exactly. And then decide again when you're 42. Right. Right. So, I mean, I think where we tie this into our conversation is that those expectations too of like this senior in high school has to know what they're going to do. Or when mm-hmm. you're in college, they need to know what the right, you know, degree is so that they can do this. And yeah. So anyway, it's just going back to those expectations that mm-hmm. are so high. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting. So with us having this conversation, what would you say to someone? Would you change what you say to anyone? So instead of saying I'm a podcaster, would you say something different? Well, I mean, it's hard. For, for a long time, when I first started, I, I had, even on my business card, I, I was a storyteller, which it seems so pretentious now that I'm 20 years on. Like, it seems so ridiculous that that is, that is what I would do. But uh, I, and the, the problem is, that's not a great question. And I almost think the first habit is that we have to figure out a new way to inquire about one another, about who we are, right? Like, and and to not necessarily assume when you hear what do you do that the answer has to be for work, right? That's That part of the responsibility and that exchange is on each of us individually. When you ask me what do you do, I need to say, you know what, I, I'm super into like uh, exotic cars and I love Macs and technology and I am, my favorite color is uh, blue, right? Like, how do we create this this sort of question that better defines our identity beyond I work with numbers all day? I spreadsheet. You know what's you know really what I mean? hard is that so with GPS, for example, we've got a new cohort that's coming in and I do a one-on-one with each of the uh, new members. And one of the things that I do want to know is what they do, like what is their profession, what's their industry, what, you know, to get an idea of where, like, because there's a lot of other people that might be in the same industry. But Mm -hmm. now I'm like questioning, like, I still want to know that information, but I don't want to put anybody on the spot or feel bad about it. I'm torn here. Why? Okay. Keep talking about that. Because I do want to know what they do for a living. (laughs) There was a while when I when I didn't ask the question, what do you do? And I remember this pretty clearly when I, when I would say, you, you know, when I would introduce myself by saying, you know, hi, I'm Pete, uh, you, you, who are you? And, and tell me the story of your life. And it starts with it as a joke, right? It starts as, oh, that's, that's a very comically broad question. But eventually, like people laugh and they'll say, well, I'm, you know, Sean. And, and then they start thinking about it. They start thinking about their life and the story that, that encapsulates their life, mm-hmm. you know, and, and invariably the answer to that, I, in fact, I would encourage you to ask this question to somebody that you've never met because my bet is the first thing they tell you is, you know, I have two kids and I'm, you know, whatever. They'll start with something that isn't their job. So ask, tell me about your life. Tell me the story of your life. Right. right? Yeah. And it'll start, they'll start, they'll think, oh my gosh, that's so big. I don't know how to answer it. But the first thing that they say won't be what they, what do. they do for a living. Yeah. Or they'll answer what they do for a living, but it will be answered in a way that is um, a that piece. probably defines the thing that they, you know, the reason they do the thing that they do, right? Like, okay, uh, uh, say Sean is an attorney, right? But Sean's, uh, but but he com- the answer will be, you know, I help people save their relationships in a divorce. Well, he's a divorce attorney. The reason he loves what he does is because he saves relationships from from being completely destroyed in a highly contentious situation. That's so interesting. I am going to change that because I think you're on to something because I'm thinking if somebody asked me, tell me the story of your life, I wouldn't start with, oh, I work with ADHD adults and and college students. Like I would probably say, well, I'm married. I have two kids. I live in Oregon. You know, I, uh, and then I might go into like, this is what I do. Like I, 
I'm really invested in the ADHD community. I love helping. I love the pot. I, I do pot. I mean, I could see myself kind of expanding yeah. it, but not starting there. That's really yeah. good. Well, and, and you know, I have a friend who says, who answers that question differently every time, but he always comes back to, but what buys my shoes is, right. And then yeah. talks about, you know, where he gets the paycheck. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I think that's a different it's a different question. And so, you know, I, I look at this from the perspective of like if I were out looking for a job. Or if I were, you know, if I were thinking about how the industry is changing, I, you know, you still kind of have to look by titles, but you don't have to stay by titles because that's how businesses right, right. tend to work. Right. It's how HR departments present jobs. Uh, and so you still have to kind of have an understanding of how titles tie to functions. But but does that have to tie to who you are as a human being? And I, I'm just not I'm just not sure that it does. And I think part of the responsibility is on how we ask that question. Yeah. And part of the responsibility is on pushing back and answering in a in a it, figuring out the answer for yourself. That is more than just a one word thing so that you can push back when that question is asked. Absolutely. You. And I think, OK, so going back to what you're saying, if somebody's asking you what you do, you could actually share like a hobby that you're excited about. Yeah. So you could say, well, I what what do you do, Pete? I love photography. I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. I am teaching my son how to play the piano and sing while he's doing right. it. And it, 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 it in nourishes my soul mm -hmm. to help this kid discover his love of music. That's what I'm doing right. right now. That's who I am right now. And it's it's the thing that like this is legit. I'm not making that up. Like, yeah, I he's on a trip right now. But when he gets back, the first thing we're going to do is sit down at the piano and and he's working on Piano Man and learning to play and sing Piano Man mm -hmm. uh, is is the thing that nourishes us mm -hmm. together. That's that's number one. Right. For sure. Yeah. What so it really is how uh, you decide podcasts. you want to answer it. Is the mm -hmm. do about your job or like what you're interested in right now? Or like, you know, what do you do? Well, I'm having a lot of conversations right now with my kids about what they want to, you know, what they want to do, like mm -hmm. I, you know, what, what they're interested in and passionate right. about and what opportunities they have. Like you could really answer it in a lot of different ways. Here's, here's another, here's another way to think about it. Let's just say you're talking to Ben Affleck. Okay. What does Ben Affleck say? Because Ben Affleck has the benefit of knowing that by and large, everyone who's talking to him already knows what he does. Right? So how would you answer that question? So what do you do? Uh, tell me the story of your life. How would you answer that question if you had the benefit of assuming that everybody else knows what your job is. Does that change the way you perceive your own identity? Right, because I don't think it would be asked. Like, I wouldn't ask Ben Affleck what he does. Right. It would be a different right. question. So what would be the question? What are you up to right now? Um, you know, tell me, like, you know, I, I wonder if that is, like, some of that is, I've just sort of, spitballing here because I I wonder if that changes the way like if if you ask me what I'm doing what I do knowing that we both know I'm already a podcaster and I run a small podcast network how would I answer that question right well I'm working on creating this new show called Headstone and it's it's a show that explores human legacy and what we want to leave behind and I'm really curious about how our identity is tied up in the work that we do when it comes to our uh, to the legacy and, and how we want people to think about us. That so is... that's interesting, because then I could say, like, I'm thinking, you know, yes, I work with adults with ADHD, but I've got this membership program that I'm building around planning and and scheduling and time management that's going to help ADHDers yeah. find a planning system that works for them. Like, it really goes into something different, doesn't it? Yeah. And if you think, think about if you volunteer, because this is where the conversation went with um, with in the coaching with Nikki, if you think about, OK, you're volunteering in a lot of different organizations, which I don't think is anything to be embarrassed about. I that's something to be really proud of that you are in your community, yeah. you know, giving your time uh, for these things that you really believe in. And so you could also replace what you do and almost like flip it, like you were saying, is it, well, I volunteer, da, 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 
what pays for my shoes is da 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 da. Mm-hmm. If you're not working and you're volunteering, then you don't have to worry about what you don't have to finish that sentence with what how you pay for something. Um, mm-hmm. Well, because that that is really important, right? Because what is I, I I do think it's important to acknowledge what the question "What do you do?" is implying, right? You're right. Because there are so many hidden signals of expectation and position and social hierarchy and wealth and all of these things. Like if I come back and say, "Well, I'm a I'm a, a doctor. I'm a surgeon. I'm." Chief of Surgery at Gray's Memorial Hospital. <laughs> and I talk like this because <laughs> right. I'm so right. fancy. Like, <laughs> but because that question presumes a, a, a fanciness yeah. and, uh, a, and a certain station. And so asking the question is a way to figure out how we're supposed to relate to each other. Right? Oh, you're so right. If I go up, yeah, so true. Right? So... How that's part of what we're trying to do. That is, is so true. Some of the stature, right? Because when what, I do, t- are you having an awakening? Yes, because when I say I work with folks with ADHD, almost immediately somebody will say, "Oh, I know someone," or "I that must be really difficult for a college student to have ADHD," or "I think I have ADHD." I mean, there's mm-hmm. always this like sentence back to me about how they are connecting to that. Right. It's just interesting. Like, it, it is. it's just an interesting reflection to kind of see what. But the... here's the thing. Like, w- w- do you get a different answer? And I think this is important from when somebody says to you, what do you do? And you say, let's just say your options are I'm an ADHD coach. I work with adults and college students to help them with their systems, et cetera. What you said, that's option two. Option three is I'm a small business owner. Hmm. Right. Like those three things communicate different messages oh, they to do. the person you're talking to. They do. You are a small business owner, right? Right. That is principally how you are able to do this other stuff, to actually do the coaching, because you're a small business owner. I have the same thing. I'm a podcaster, but I'm also a small business right. owner. Like I look at the money that I pay to the people who work for me and I think, oh my goodness, I'm a small business owner. Right, right. <laughs> you know, right. Well, and I think you also have to decide on who you're talking to, how important it is to yeah. what what information you give. Yes. Like how invested are you in this new person or in this in this conversation? Because I'm going to take it into a different angle. My husband has a disability. He hasn't worked full time in a long time. Mm-hmm. It could easily be well, we came up with this sort of elevator speech that when he meets new people, he says he's a photographer. Mm -hmm. Because he is. He rightfully should. He's so good. He is a photographer and he gets paid for it. He gets paid for it. Whether people need to know it's full time or not doesn't matter. Uh, Or if it's just for fun, it doesn't matter. He is a photographer. But that Mm -hmm. was the easiest way to explain it because people didn't understand why he was home during the day or why he didn't have a traditional like Mm -hmm. nine to five position or why he could volunteer, you know, when very few dads do. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, we did have, you know, I remember having the conversation of, I think it's just going to be easier if, if you say this, and then you don't have to go into the whole thing about MS and all of that. And Mm -hmm. so I think that it's helpful to have kind of a canned, you know, when you're in a situation like that of what you want to say that you're comfortable with. But then if we're having a conversation with like new friends, like they're going to become new friends, like it's not just a Mm -hmm. meet and greet, but like now they're at our house and we're hanging out with them, then it's worth having a conversation of, hey, this is kind of what's been going on and where we, why we are, where we are today. And, and then it's worth the conversation of the background. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, because you get to gauge yeah. the kind of relationship you want to have with somebody by the first impression you make with the answer to that question. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? I, the one I look forward to the most is retired. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't wait. Well, I'm going to be uh, in Italy and I'm going to just say retired. It's kind of funny that you say that. I'll probably still run a podcast. Yes. Though. Yeah. Because we were talking about that too recently because, you know, he's 52 now. 
<laughs> and we were like, you know, pretty soon you can just say you're retired and no one's even going to question it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Days are clicking well, away. And something that my sister did, which I thought was really interesting, is because most of her life she stayed at home with her kids. And so she never really had a career. She doesn't have that title of yeah. accountant or whatever. She did miscellaneous jobs. She volunteered. She was a CASA for a long time. Uh, but now she says she's retired. And people will be like, well, what are you retired from? She's like, raising my oh, kids. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> enough and she's already. just very like flippant about it. Like I raised yeah. my kids and I'm retired yeah. now because they're adult children. <laughs> they're adults yeah. and they're running their own lives. Right. I, you know, there's a lot of uh, excellence there. Yeah. Be proud. You're yeah. right. You did your job, sister. <laughs> and yeah, you did right. a well, good one. You did a good job. And I th I think and I you just you just said something that's that is a little bit like it just makes me think like as we're talking about the shame associated with saying you know who you are what you do. I think that the the effort for me at least is being able to come up with an answer that I can say every time to anyone who asks with pride. Absolutely. Right? It doesn't matter what I do. It's that I'm proud of doing that work, right? Absolutely. Like I, the reason I do the thing I do is to help somebody else in the world who doesn't do that job, whether they choose not to do that job or needs to do the job or wants to learn something new. Like the reason I do what I do is to help someone else somewhere. And whether that's, um, you know, doing uh, like, I've done some dirty jobs in my life sure. and I did the dirty jobs because I was there when somebody else would not right. and would not do that job. And that's that's how you say I'm proud to do what I do because I help somebody else who, who can't or won't do this job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. So Great. OK, that's awesome. Thanks, everyone. I feel good. Do you feel better? I feel good. So this whole yeah. series, we're going to be looking for more input from everybody uh, about how you think about the work that you do in the world and how you do it and, and are able to say it with pride and are able for those who are looking for work right now, like how you're able to fashion a, a position statement for yourself that that uh, allows you to do it with pride, no shame and Let's help other people. Well, and we want to know everything. Melissa, we're putting together a survey to to send out to our listeners. And Melissa was like, well, what, kind, what kinds of questions do you want? I'm like, everything. I want to know everything. <laughs> I want to know all the things about jobs. Because again, it's my curiosity that just keeps yeah. running. So uh, right. I'm sure we'll have a, a question so there. So if you about get the survey, what, what did yeah, we the miss? Question, <laughs> the questionnaire says, don't worry, it'll only take an hour and a half to complete. That's because of Nikki. I want to know everything. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, downloading and listening to this show. It, it's a, a little bit off the beaten path today, but I think this makes for a good introduction to our conversation about jobs, the work we do, and who we are as we do it. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate you downloading and listening to this show. Thank you for your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute to the conversation, we're heading over to the Show Talk channel in our Discord server, and you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level or better. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm -hmm.